Julie, it's always a pleasure. You're a top producing realtor here in Rancho Santa Fe. And today you brought us to an incredible place for all the animal lovers. You are in for a treat today, Tawny. We're here at Helen Woodward. We're going to meet a special person who knows all about this place. And we get to have a tour of the new adoptions building, which is opening soon. Let's uh, head inside and meet Mike. Tawny, I'm so pleased to introduce you to a true pioneer in the animal welfare industry. This is Mike Arms and he has been president and CEO of Helen Woodward for almost 20 years now. My goodness. Well, I know Helen Woodward's been open for 40 years and you do wonderful things. So tell me a little bit about what happens here at Helen Woodward. Well, I always tell everybody that we're different from most places. Not better, we're just different. I consider Helen Woodward Animal Center to be the facility of the future. We, like everybody else, we do adoptions and that's our number one goal, but we also have two hospitals, a small animal practice, a large equine hospital. We have the largest children's education center in the nation. We have our own stables, our own horses. We have therapeutic riding for the physically and mentally challenged. We have Club Pet, a boarding facility that helps with revenue to take care of the orphan pets. So we have all these variety of things under one umbrella. And Julie tells me that we actually get to take a look inside of what you do, so I can't wait to tour the grounds. Thank you so much. I think you're going to be impressed. So we're in the stables right now. And as you were telling us just a little bit earlier that Helen Woodward goes above and beyond and does actually programs with these animals. Correct. Now the small ones, the miniature horses, the miniature donkey, they're using our education department because they were rescues. Okay. And so we show them the need to take care of them. We, we really stress that we were put on this magnificent planet to share it with them, not to take advantage or use them. So we do that in education. The big guys over here, like De Desi, they're part of our therapeutic riding program. Now, people don't realize how the relationship with the pet pets are with humans. Now these horses know when that child comes out of a wheelchair and is sitting on their back, they know they, they have do. something special mm -hmm. on their back. They're very gentle. They know how to really walk smoothly to make sure the child doesn't slide off. So they're very special animals and it's all about sharing this planet with them. It's amazing what animals can do. It's just a beautiful thing. So in addition to this area, which is the stables, you also adopt out dogs as well, right? Dogs and cats. And cats. Yes. yes. Let's not forget about the cats. No, no, I'll be in trouble if I forget the cats. In all ages as well, right? Exactly. Exactly. Well, I think I'm ready to um, hold some puppies. I think it's time. You gotta get over there. So I think Julie and I just fell in love. So I have little Aspen, which is adorable, but this is just a sweet taste of all the incredible dogs that you welcome into your animal shelter. And we just love them. This is August and it's a little terrier blend. Oh, not a mix, right? Nope, a, a blend. blend. <laughs> so I know Julie was telling me that you have so many wonderful programs through Helen Woodward, if you want to touch a little bit on that. Sure, it's not only adoptions of these little ones, but we have a program that we're really proud of called Pets Without Walls, where we're helping take care of the pets of the homeless. We feed them, we vaccinate them, and we also have a mobile clinic that goes down and we spay and neuter them. That's wonderful. Somebody has to help those pets and we stepped up to the plate for that. Absolutely, and I mean, with being around 40 years, you found programs that work and took care of such a need that was in the community as well. Sure, I mean, if you have to go visit grandma because she's not doing well, you need to board your pet. Well, we have club pet boarding. It's first class boarding facility to take care of the pet while you're away. We have the largest children's education center anywhere where about 1,700 children will go through education this year to learn how to share the earth with the animals. And we're lucky to see them grow here, we'll go into camp, come back as part-time work. We see at least four a year go off to be veterinarians. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. So we're very blessed. So how can the community get involved right now for Helen Woodward? Maybe they're not ready to adopt a dog, but they want to help. 
Well, there's so many different ways. If they want to volunteer, we could always use help in loving them and petting them and walking them. Or if you could be a foster parent, when we get these little babies with no moms, they need to be bottle fed. I will do this all so day. We love, we love to have more foster. And of course, you could always donate to the center to help us do the work that we do. I think your orphaned objects shop is a great idea. It's located right here, very convenient to uh, neighbors, and you can drop off anything that you no longer have use for, uh, and the funds raised when you sell it go to support the center. Exactly. I mean, we don't want to spend the money away. We want to keep the money here, doing the work that we should be doing. So Mike, I know you have a beautiful new adoptions building ready to open. Let's head over there and see uh, how that building is going to change what you're able to do here at Helen Woodward. And I know it's still under construction, so we're going to have to change these adorable puppies out for hard hats. And it's going to be tough, but <laughs> temporarily. <laughs> tough to leave them behind. Let's go. What a beautiful lobby. Mike, how large is this building? Well, when it's all done, it'll be 32,000 square feet. This is their temporary home until we find them a forever home. But they are going to be, this is going to be their palace. It's a city for orphan pets. Wonderful. Beautiful. And you also have a brand new medical station within here, which you said you used to work out of, was it closet space before? A storage before? closet. That's what we had to work, do our spay neuters out of. So now the doctors, the staff, the pets, now they have a state-of-the-art medical center. My goodness. So will this increase the number of procedures you can do on a, a weekly or annual basis? Not only increase the number of procedures, but increase the number of lives we can save. Wonderful. And that's the key, isn't that's it? Love. That's what we're doing it for. Absolutely. So this is proof that everyone who's donated, helped, volunteered, and adopted, they helped create this, right? This belongs to them. Oh, that's beautiful. Them and the orphans. Well, Rancho Santa Fe is a very giving community. And I love how humble you are that you're helping these animals, but you're also giving credit to the community that's helping you as well. That's where the credit belongs. Thanks for this beautiful tour, and I can't wait to see many more animals adopted. Thank you so much. Another beautiful day in San Diego. Yeah, isn't it gorgeous down here? It just can't beat the weather and this is a great location here. Okay, so we're in Seaport and I love coming to this area. There's some fun activities to do, some cool restaurants, but you're telling me that they're redoing this whole area? Yep, anticipated groundbreaking is gonna be March 2022 and this place will be a completely different location. At world-class amenities, valuable community resources for the residents that live here. It's going to be just gorgeous, yeah. Okay, so how so? I mean, you're you're talking completely a 180, everything redone, so new restaurants. When somebody says, what is what does it remind you of San Diego? What do you think? Oh, in terms of icons? Well, maybe the bridge, but yeah, you're right. There isn't really anything that... There's really nothing that stands out as an icon. The visionaries that are planning this project are anticipating a 500-foot tower right in this area here tower, that will like house hotels, hotel rooms, a butterfly exhibit inside the tower. I do love butterflies. Um, an observation deck on the very top. But that's not all they're doing here. There's also going to be an aquarium here, a park. They're really trying to pull in the ecosystem here and really maintain the natural resources that San Diego has in this, in this project. Now, what about, there's not, I mean, San Diego, you look out in the bay, there's a lot of sailboats, boats coming through, we have the military presence, but there's not a lot of yachts. Is it true that maybe the marina will get a little bit of an upgrade? Absolutely, there's no high-end, just not like Miami here, right? You don't see high-end super yachts pulling in San Diego Bay. I don't think there's a berth large enough for them, right? No. No, so that's part of the development is they want to have high-end marinas here. So most of the marinas that we see on this end and on that end will be completely redone to allow for those yachts to pull into San Diego Bay. So also uh, high-end boutique hotels that will allow those guests to come off their high-end yachts and stay in nice you know, hotels. But there's also going to be, on this end, we've got beaches, 
What? Right. Okay. Beach volleyball. Oh my goodness. Oh, how about some shopping? All right, so you had me at butterflies, but now you're saying there's going to be shopping and beaches. What type of beaches? Beaches right over here that will allow visitors who come in for conventions to spend a day at the beach without grabbing an Uber. Yeah, that's a little bit hard because sometimes when you're downtown, you don't want to trek all the way to that's Mission right. Beach. or So we're going to have some nice sand to frolic in over here. And all the water activities too. You want to take a jet ski out, you want to play beach volleyball, that's all going to be here. Um, there's also going to be marinas over here that have the boutique hotels, promenades, shopping, food court, you name it. It's going to be a world-class destination. San Diego is definitely growing up as a city, and this will bring in visitors from all over the world. I think so, because San Diego, sometimes people think it doesn't. it's not really known for anything. So this is really going to put Seaport Village back on the map. On the map and bring the action That's to right. San Diego. That's right, this place will be just thriving and great for visitors and for residents too. Speaking of residents, I've got a spectacular place I want to show you. It's a two bedroom, two bath. It's literally right across the street for anybody that buys that place. They can just come right out their door and enjoy everything that this location is going to have to offer. Well, I can't wait to see it lead the way. Let's go. a fabulous location yes. and this does not does it deliver did it deliver and then and some then so, right? i mean yeah. check this place out park place when you think of it it's got to live up to like monopoly, monopoly standards end. high end you want to be on that part of the board don't you yeah you yeah. want to be collecting That's and right. being part of the action right next to go collect that 200 dollars. <laughs> but yeah you're right this is an excellent location in san diego nice place in the building nice location your your seven floors up just outside of the action in Seaport Village. Yeah, and it feels so spacious. So I've been in some some really cool places downtown, but they kind of feel a little bit yeah, a little cramped boxy. because you know they're building so quickly and space is limited. But this feels this split well, design. Yeah. It's nice open floor plan. You can see the morning light coming in, shining on the beautiful floors here. So spacious, and check out this kitchen. Wow, yeah, wonderfully appointed kitchen, granite countertops, the maple cabinets. Uh, really accent the floor, floors really well. and Everything you'd want in the kitchen for downtown, for sure. Are you a chef? Do you uh, cook? I'm not cook. This is more our speed. Here, oh, that's so. your yeah, seed, the yeah, champagne, I, the wine. We're not doing the cooking, yeah. The same with me. I like to cuddle up with a nice glass of wine to a fireplace, which you have a yeah. dual purpose fireplace. You that's can be right. hanging out in the living room. Uh, you know what the best feature of the fireplace is? What? You just flip a switch. Uh, <laughs> that's perfect because yeah. I'm sorry, I get my nails done. I'm not going to be chopping wood. No so chopping wood here. I just That's need okay. To flip a but switch. You, you flip a switch, you can enjoy that from this living room area with the night lights shining through the window. You can also enjoy it at the dining room, and it's an awesome feature. Which, speaking of the view, I'm looking out those windows and that door. I mean, check out the view. Look at everything around. Yeah, it's a gorgeous view. You know, what I love about this location in this unit is you're seven floors up but you're not actually staring at a building right out in front of us. And this location actually happens to be spectacular because we do have the Seaport Village project over here, which is just this way. And then straight up this way, we've got the Horton uh, Tech Campus that's coming up. I haven't even heard of this. It's a, it was just voted unanimous to be approved, and it's gonna be a tech center with high-tech companies, shopping, retail, and then we have the Manchester Grand Project to the west of us. So you know what that is going to do, these values? I can imagine. I mean, anybody moving that on buys up. here, yeah, anybody, <laughs> <laughs> anybody that buys here is going to really benefit from all of these things happening in San Diego. It's a really good time to be here. Yeah, San Diego is always just the spot to be, but it sounds like this is going to be really a world class location, not oh, only yeah. for visitors, but if you get in now, this is the sweet spot to get in at. It is. It's a good time. I mean, the market's in a good place. It's a great location, you can't beat it. And uh, just, we're, I mean, look at, we're in wonderful San Diego. I how know, you, check how, this out. How can we it got, get any better? We got the Coronado Bridge, we got the Convention Center, we got world-class tacos That's across right. the street. <laughs> I mean. What else can you ask for? So. You know, the window in the um, bedroom too, the master bedroom, you have direct bay views. Oh, really pretty. Really that's pretty. so nice yeah. to get. It's to so nice to, to wake up to yeah. that every day. It just sort of resets you, makes you, you know, realize, hey, life is good. Life is good life in is San good Diego. San Diego, can't beat it. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, 
Hi, Tawny. How are you? Awesome. So I know you're the Prince of Cardiff, but I have to say, I think you're also the Prince of Lifestyle. So what do you have for me today? Well, today I'm going to show you this house that was a blank canvas and they turned it into a masterpiece. I'm intrigued. Come on in. <laughs> I would not expect this, Sean. This is stunning. I told you it was going to be a great surprise because you wouldn't expect to see such a great open space in a townhome in Carmel Valley. No, honestly, I pictured more of the traditional track home, a little closed off, and this is just transformed into modern, a little rustic at the same time. Well, the thing that the reason they chose this house, they loved the backyard. And as you'll, you'll see in a little while, how special that is. But the house had the bones on the outside and it, they were able to see through what the house was, a 1980s, or excuse me, a 1990s home, and then transformed it into what you see today. And one of the things they did really well here is, even though it's the open concept plan that everybody loves, they were able to have some separate, distinct seating areas within that. And that's, I think, one of the things that people are finding out. Everyone wants one great big room, but then if you're with, the kids, the husband, and you're all in the same room, you don't really have any of that quiet, intimate space, and they mastered that in this house. I mean, it's beautiful. So essentially we'd be in the living room, but I love that there's that separate seating. So you can kind of have your quiet time if you want, but if you entertain, you can make it into this grand room. And I've been to parties here and they're su <laughs> super fun. Like these guys are great cooks. So they really wanted a nice kitchen and they reconfigured this kitchen completely. And one of the really? great things too is, like there was a wall like dividing the space up. Dining room was over here to my right and family room was there. So there were two big seating areas which didn't really make sense for the house. So they moved the dining area next to the kitchen, which is great because they like to entertain. They're great barbecuers. They make great, I mean, I, everything I've had here has been great, so. So you're telling me that this was the dining room, but then this kitchen wasn't even this kitchen Not was completely all to this. configured differently. It was smaller, it wasn't as open, it wasn't as user friendly, and it certainly didn't have this really nice farmhouse contemporary look no. like it does. And I love that. I, looking at the before and afters, I honestly wouldn't expect it. I personally wouldn't think to knock down a wall, which I think most people kind of lack that. They find a home, but they kind of settle for it, or they love it, but that one factor makes them not buy the home. Well, it's interesting because people get stopped by silly things like that, or like, I don't like the cabinets, I don't like the way this is configured. And these guys actually had vision, but they lived in the house a little bit before they ripped it apart, which That's I think smart. is super smart. Because most people, if they get a designer or architect, or if they take advice from somebody like me, we have lots of resources and we can give them ideas, but they haven't lived in the house yet. So once you live in a house a little bit, you'll see how are you gonna use it, like what best suits you and your needs. And so that was one of the really smart things that they did. That's a huge point because you wanna think about the functionality of it and you don't know that until you're actually living in it and realize, no, I don't want another dining room there. I want it to be another part of the living room. <laughs> and everyone looks for the perfect house and there really is no perfect house. Like when we're showing houses, you want to first find out the lifestyle, how you're going to use the house, like what things you want to be close to, and then you can make almost the perfect house, even though still all of us, I just went through a remodel. I would have done mine slightly different because you learn along the process, Absolutely. but this is about as perfect as you can get. And this is, so this was their whole vision with, I love it, the, the wooden beams, not just the open concept, but the coloring, everything. It's something when you walk in, you would never even expect this in this area. Well, it was pretty great because they wanted to integrate things that they liked from their previous homes. And they showed me pictures of things that they did there and that they really liked, but then also have it be new in like California. So it was kind of an integration of the past and then what they were looking for in their future here in California. I love that. And obviously you said they fell in love with the backyard. So I think we should check out the backyard. The backyard's <laughs> awesome. And that's true too. They didn't even, if falling in love with the backyard and then you can look and say, this has great bones. I'm going to change everything because I love this backyard. Oh, great. Like this, I mean, this is a sanctuary for entertaining. It is. I mean, so much space. You have neighbors, but you don't even know you have neighbors here. So it's really nice mix of like nature along with contemporary outdoor living. Oh, it's beautiful. That entertainment factor. And I love, it sounds like you're next to a creek. So that's well, soothing. And they came yeah. from the countryside. 
So this that is really sense. like, they're right. Okay, this is the house. And it was day number two. They came for the weekend to look at houses. And like, you never expect someone from another city to buy a house on day number two. They said like, okay, this is it. <laughs> I'm like, what? That, Cause that doesn't happen that often. Right, but, but you, awesome. you also have the ability seeing so many houses that you know, no house is ever perfect. So you almost want your clients to put that spin on it. So they feel like it's their home. What was so interesting is we, they wanted to start their search with like land, a bigger house, maybe a place for a horse. And then we ended up here, which the lifestyle is much more conducive to California. Cause we're right, we're by Pacific Highlands Ranch, which yeah. has some great restaurants. And then by, we're really close to one Paseo, which yes. just opened mm -hmm. like my favorite new place is the butchery. There's a brand new oyster bar that just opened there. There's the Shake Shack, which is super awesome. Just don't go too often. <laughs> But literally, like, this has, like, everything. You're close to the movies, Sinopolis, Delmore Highlands. Like, it has everything right here. Definitely. But then you're, you're like, in your own special oasis here. And I think that's a good lesson for everybody. It's like, if you see something that you like and there's one little factor, don't let it get to you because you can change it. Exactly. It's like buying a dress and it doesn't fit just right. Go to the tailors. Well, that's you what you do with just about everything. Yeah. <laughs> you could tailor a house you to what you You can tailor a love. house. And so... One of the things that we're really good at, we can provide those resources for people too. And it's super important because when somebody's coming from another part of the country, that's super nerve wracking because they don't know like, who can they trust? Are they gonna be taken advantage of? Who's gonna do a good job? Who's gonna stay in schedule? And often those are hard things to make happen. So you want to have resources that you can use and trust. Well, that's fantastic. I would trust you because I need some help. I'm the one that comes in and I want everything. Every different style I see, I want. So maybe you can help me find my perfect home. Make it perfect for you. That's true. That's really the ticket. It has to be perfect for you. Absolutely. Well, clearly, because this house is stunning and like no other house in this neighborhood. What's for sale and <laughs> what do you think? I love it. I'll take it. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs>